Hello everyone, happy Whiskey Wednesday. This is Savor at Home number 72. And this week I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I actually have two samples from Redwood Empire that my friend Rachel gave me. And she gave the samples to me in a little two ounce bottle and in a little vial. One is labeled F and the other is labeled for later. These are leftovers from uh, actually our Kentucky trip and um, from one of the neat blind tastings. Anyways, she gave them to me and did not tell me which was which. So I get to blind taste these two samples. Now I do know which two of the whiskeys she gave me from the Redwood Empire lineup. And I'll tell you a little bit about them. So Redwood Empire is located in Sonoma County. And for every bottle that they sell, they apparently plant a tree. They market themselves as a sustainable distillery and they classify themselves as sustainable because they use a column still, meaning they do one distillation and it requires less energy to run and less water to run. Their spent grains go to farmers for feed, which is pretty common practice, I think and they have a state-of-the-art water reclamation station. Redwood Empire produces five different whiskeys. They have a straight bourbon, a straight rye, a bourbon, a rye, and a blend of straight whiskeys. What I'm trying today is Emerald Giant. This is their rye, not their straight rye, and it is named after the fastest growing redwood. It is a 95% rye mash bill with 5% malted barley. It's aged between three and five years in new charred oak barrels. And it's bottled at 45% ABV. Now, I believe this is a rye whiskey and not a straight rye whiskey because there is that three-year-old um, rye tossed in and they don't want to put an age statement on the bottle um, because in order to be a straight rye or straight bourbon whiskey it has to be aged for a minimum of two years however you do have to put an age statement on the bottle if it's less than four years old so if it's over four years old no age statement so yeah and i will also be trying lost monarch this is their blend of straight whiskeys, and it is named after the largest coastal redwood. Their blend of straight whiskeys is comprised of 40% bourbon and 60% rye. Their bourbon mash bill is 75% corn, 21% rye, and 4% malted barley. So it's kind of a high rye bourbon. And then their rye, you know the mash bill, it's a 95.5 rye mash bill. The rye that goes into this blend is aged anywhere between three to five years in new charred oak barrels. And the bourbon that goes in is aged anywhere from four to 12 years in new charred oak barrels. All right, so again, I don't know which whiskey is in which glass, but let's go ahead and check out the colors here. So you can see that in my right hand, it looks to be a little bit darker, but the color is super similar. They're both a caramel color. Maybe the one in the, my right hand in the neat glass is, uh, is just slightly darker. So we'll start with the glass in my left hand. This came from the bottle labeled F. Right away, I'm picking up pickles. It's also a little dusty and there's some notes of cocoa. There's a little bit of citrus and some caramel. There's also a little bit of nuttiness in here and it reminds me of marzipan. And maybe there's just like a touch of silly putty. So let's see how it tastes. So both of these whiskeys are at 45% ABV and right off the bat, for 45%, I'm getting a little bit more heat than I would expect. Um, this is also a little bit thinner than I would like as far as mouthfeel goes. And initially I'm getting some orange notes. There's also some spiciness. I'm getting cinnamon and cloves. And I am getting that pickly thing in the palette as well. It also has a little bit of a dry finish. 
All right, let's move on to the vial that was labeled for later. So this is the one that was slightly darker and right away I'm getting malted milk balls. It's got some fruitiness to it as well. It's kind of like dark fruits, dried fruits. It's reminding me of prunes. I'm getting a little bit of caramel, some potpourri, and there's a mix of spices. I can almost smell the yeast. So it smells like bread dough. Let's see how it tastes. So this also has a little bit more heat than I would expect for something at 45%, but it's pretty much in line with um, the first whiskey I tasted. It has just the slightest bit more viscosity, but still a little bit on the thinner mouthfeel. And I'm getting a lot more spices on the palate. This is like cinnamon and cloves and just a touch of star anise. There's some chocolatiness and a little bit of an herbal aspect to it. And there's not too, too much uh, fruitiness. There was a lot more fruitiness on the nose, but I am getting some hints of like a dried blood orange. So overall for my flavor profile, I would prefer the one in the neat glass that was in the vial labeled for later. So let's find out which whiskey was which. All right, so the first whiskey that I tasted that was in the little two ounce bottle labeled F was in fact Lost Monarch. This was the blend of straight whiskeys. Now, I thought this would be the case because it has that bourbon mixed into it and the flavor profile definitely, definitely tasted like what I believe bourbons to taste like, right? It had that pickle note that I normally get right off the bat when I uh, open a bottle of bourbon or first nose a glass of bourbon. And now not every bourbon has this, but I'm generalizing here. Um, it had, yeah, caramel and citrus on the nose and some nuttiness. So to me, it was very reminiscent of a bourbon, which is a little bit surprising being that there's only 40% bourbon and yeah, but I guess, I guess maybe not. I was picking up some similar notes in the rye, so it would, would make sense that mixing in, you know, 40% bourbon with 60% rye would result in something that would remind me more of a bourbon, I guess. So that means that the second whiskey that I tasted, the one that I preferred that was in the little vial labeled for later was in fact their rye whiskey called Emerald Giant. I suspected this was the rye because of the maltiness I was getting. Rye is typically associated with spiciness and that's not always the case. There's definitely some fruitiness that comes forward and I was getting some fruity notes as well. Um, but there was a lot of malty, chocolatey characteristics as well in the nose. These spices came through a little bit more on the palate but it was a lot of baking spices and a little bit of an herbal quality. I recommend if you're in California, definitely check out Redwood Empire. And if you like similar whiskeys to what I like, I definitely check out their rye first. I really enjoyed that, that was nice. Of course, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment below. Have you tried any other products from Redwood Empire or have you tried the two that I just tried tonight? Make sure to subscribe. And I also want to give a huge shout out to my Patreons. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel and being a part of the start of what I hope to be a really neat community. If you would like to support on Patreon and join the community, I'll leave the link down below in the description. Pretending to text Rachel, pretending to text Rachel. Do, 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 do.